Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another love reading episode. And this is all uh, to hope to encourage young and old both to really bring the, the idea of reading within our lives. Because uh, coming back to the Quran, coming back to the idea of Iqra, that was the very first thing said to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that reading is essential and uh, yes it it was through the pen through the book that's how we essentially started now we are often reading straight off kindle straight off uh, the net but reading as an exercise is sort of it should be as as common to us as uh, eating drinking cleanliness but bathing doing exercising whatever we do so reading for the mind but for the soul for uh, and in, invariably like we say okay we just eat for uh, we just eat for our body but no what we eat has impact on our brain on our spirituality when we start with bismillah when we eat halal all those things you know there's a ripple effect on on our wholesomeness so too with reading and why uh, you know in ramadan i want to pick on the this love reading concept is that supposedly the eating is a bit less, the something else is a bit, maybe the sleeping is less. So there is this opportunity, a window of opportunity to enhance our reading. And uh, so I'd like to pick on authors, I'd like to pick on their books, uh, and i like to show you who published it. It gives you a background on how it came about. So it's not just more of an encyclopedia, oh, I know, this one, that one, all these people, and and I'm able to, uh, when something's mentioned, the whole point of reading is also when in society something's happened, you're able to grasp, oh, this sort of fits here, this sort of fits here. That's just at a layman level, and I love doing everything at a very baseline level. Let's take it from here up. To get, you know, they say that the specialist one who knows more and more about less and less. So if we want to get to be super precise of knowing all about economics, about science, about something. There's plenty out there. But for as a layman, as a Muslim, as a us knowing what our own scholars have brought as a heritage to at the world platform, because Islam is not just about us sitting in a corner and just working about ourselves. No, we are here to make impact. Our Rasul was, you know, was the Rasul for the whole, um, uh, not just the Ummah, it was for the whole of mankind. You know, other prophets were limited to theirs. So our reading within our own to start with, what our scholars have brought, and to spill it to see that it has impact on the wider world. And, and we've done this. We've looked at some of the you know, uh, um, or earliest scientists or polymaths or other people who were good at everything. In those times, maybe knowledge was easier to grasp totally. Now maybe it is impossible to have a note, but the beauty is that Allah has now given us the internet, the world wide web, that you are able to, you don't have to be a specialist in anything or in everything, but you can have an idea of these are the kind of things that are. And the beautiful thing, which I've, again, I, I like the idea of the bird's eye view, is just took it top up and see what are the parameters around which we can be looking at. So today I want to just go over uh, another beautiful author I loved, and uh, uh, you know, it, it has to be at some level, it is personal what I'm sharing of what I found value in. And I do feel that, inshallah, may it bring value to others. If I could benefit, I'm sure there are plenty others, uh, better people than me, that who could benefit. So, the, the author I want to look at today is Aisha Limu. And she was a prominent scholar all the way back from the time uh, fr she was born, uh, I think. Uh, quite early um, in 1940, and I first came across her at, there was a conference in, uh, in England in 1976 on Islam, a convention of Islamic scholars or, or something to that effect in April. And she and another lady, um, Fatima Hiran, were one of the two female speakers. So, you know, when we talk about that, um, uh, oh, women haven't been in the forefront, they always have been. You know, it's just that maybe um, the, uh, the bite 
um, what what we call um, the bite size, you know, the what they got as time in a platform may have been less, but they both, so anyway, so they wrote this book, Woman in Islam, and uh, uh, I found that very useful of that time, uh, that they were both reverts, they were both maybe uh, in whatever age they were, but it was lovely as a, as a university goer, as a teenager, or as more, how, you, we always had some icons to look at. Anyway, so she was British. She married um, a, a Nigerian sheikh, and so she lived in Nigeria. And subhanAllah, so you know when we say, we talk about, oh, I, I am from where I am. I can't be displaced. And especially for young people today is we need to always be in our comfort zone. We can't move out because this is where I am. So in those days with no internet, no something, maybe you had to write letters to your parents and all of that, uh, that there was no instant connection. You know, this instant gratification we need. So what I loved about her as an author, how much on education she did in Nigeria. And by the time I wanted to get in touch with her, um, there wasn't still access to internet or other things to be able to email. But she passed away in 2019. And then I was reading on her obituary. And for me, many things crop up as the beauty is that while people are alive and people like her who did so much at the educational level, for female educational level, for other things, for uh, if you just read up on her, it's amazing. I just want to bring her name to the fore, her Aisha, and the beauty of, of what was given to an obituary by students or by other people who benefited from the Sadqai Jariya um, institutes you put in place is the humility. And I've been reading more on other authors, and I will, inshallah, come to them as well. But, you know, also when you're reading, look to see how we walk the talk. Now, unfortunately, everything is here plastered on the wall, uh, on, uh, 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 you know, visually. We need to have it, even all the blogs, all the beautiful and maybe not so beautiful uh, uh, accessible things on on youtube and others uh, you always have a like and a dislike or whatever a likes and for whatever is going on with palestine now many of the westerners who have been using that as a topic of discussion is primarily for seeing the high rise of the viewership of how many people are viewing it S so then you need to worry about where is our intention? Is it all about I'm here and then the next thing I have to do is check how many people actually watch me? No, if our intention is good, whether it's now, whether it's later, whether it's so many years later, the impact is still there. And we can see it with the authors of, you know, Imam Ghazali, of so many of the people from then when they wrote, wrote, and wrote, and maybe in their own times they weren't appreciated, but the, their value is still coming to surface now. And uh, so, again, back to coming back to her of the humility. And you know the other beautiful thing? So she had a lovely husband. I, I, he's a sheikh. You can look him up. I don't like to always keep everything at my fingertips to know because you know that information you can get. But um, so she, uh, as far as I know, she had three children. I know of Mariam. And how I traced Aisha Limu was when I saw the name Mariam Limu uh, on a YouTube, uh, a young lady um, giving a very good talk mostly on um, sort of marriage-related issues or something, but it was lovely. And so then I traced her and I discovered she was Aisha Limu's uh, daughter. And you know, the beautiful thing when you're looking at authors, look around them, see. Uh, look, it's not a judgment call, but you will notice invariably when it's a, uh, it's a, somebody who's really authentic in walking their talk, you will see the upline and the downline being as pristine as can be. So yes, there are many, many uh, uh, beautiful authors, beautiful people in the world who Allah, uh, they came out of nowhere and maybe the children didn't follow what they did. So that is their, their heritage, their, uh, uh, that's what written for them. But the beauty is that Aisha Limu not only left in her children, so I read up on uh, Maryam, I looked at Bilal, Ibrahim I didn't look up on, but that they then are carrying on the legacy of their parents. Um, the sheikh is also late, but you know, the beauty is that, uh, again, 
I, I sort of feel scared whenever I say, even in goodness or badness, it, at, at the end of the day, who am I to be judging these stalwarts, these, these giants in our world, uh, in scholars and otherwise, and to be commenting on them is like, is a bit of a, uh, you know, it's just presuming as though I am there to be able to critique them or say something. Even if I'm not critiquing them, but you know, they stand alone with my sharing or without. But what I do love to share is because they they were, these are people, authors from whom we can benefit. And if in Ramadan we can take something, not just for ourselves, for our older people, to learn to pass it on to our young ones. And you know, like there are all these things, oh, mom, what did you used to do in the old days? You didn't have the internet, you didn't have this, you didn't have that. And they said, we had the ball to play with in the garden, we had bicycles, we did this, we did that. And you know, we had time, we had a human connection with other people. Now it's all on the, you know, on, the, on social media maybe. So with things like that, to let people know that our heritage isn't that, you know, we talk about, um, yes, we had wonderful people, then there was a stagnation in our deen, and we went down and down, and then, you know, there was nothing good happening in us. No, the beauty in, is that Allah always chooses in every era, everything. There are these gems, there are these, uh, some people consider, you know, use the word abdal in every, in every time. There, is an, uh, there are these, uh, what they call them, well, I'll say torchbearers, but they're like these... Um, people, I can't think of the term that they use for them, uh, kutub, um, on whom, around whom the, the, the world stays purified. You know, so it's about like so much pollution going on and because of people. So we have had that. The fact that sometimes we don't know about them, they may be in the, we'll think of the 17th, 18th, 19th century or whenever we were colonized and we haven't been able to move up. But even in the days of uh, colonization, our scholars, our beautiful writers were there. It's just that because the hegemony was of the colonized, our information wasn't getting out. And now with more and more things being translated, it's coming to the fore. But the beauty of, of Aisha Limu was the fact that she was um, uh, a, a, a white, uh, a British a, a woman, 1940. She went to university there and she discovered... Um, uh, you know, uh, again, it, even to mention one thing leads to the other, and you find certain sources have always been gems or um, repositories of treasured items. So um, the SOAS, the School of uh, Oriental and African Studies in, in England, many, many people have come out of there who have then been of great benefit to our faith. Otherwise, also, but um, she was also, in, in, you know, uh, other. So it's all these things which were, for me, repositories of good information, whether it's SOAS, whether it's something called the Federation of um, Islamic uh, Students or something, FOSIS is the short form for it. So she was there. So even way back in the 60s, there was, you know, there was goodness happening. It's the fact that maybe we weren't aware of it or we, you know, there was, uh, uh, it hasn't come to us. But I'm using maybe people from the past also for our next generations to know it has been continuous. Our growth in the in our literature, it's always been there. The fact that I didn't know about certain things of a certain time period or nothing happening, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. So that's what learning and reading should be able to do to us. I'm just sharing these names and these books. Her, her beautiful books was on laxity. The, the, uh, well, it was one was the earliest one I'd read was the, and in 1976. And then there was another one on laxity, modernism and extremism. And if I'm not mistaken, the, the forward or, uh, was recommended by Imam uh, Yusuf al-Qaradawi, and I love that too. So, you know, we can stay pristine, pure to our authentic faith without having to do convoluted moves to make it Western accepted. So uh, that's the kind of heritage I want to share with you that we have in our deen and look out for it and try and find it wherever you can. So Aisha Limu is another uh, just name I'd love you to Google, research on, and see um, what goodness she had done in Nigeria.
So uh, with that, inshallah, we'll move on to another one uh, uh, in the future. But it's lovely to know what we have in our heritage of scholarly works done by uh, Muslims. With that, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.